I reused some old parts to hopefully fabricate my intentions. We have to basically put together the whole frame. I mount the controller kind of. Chaos ensues as usual, but hopefully by the end of it I have something I can sit on. So let's go. This is by far the most daunting part of this project because I didn't really have an idea beforehand going into this. I thought I was going to reuse the original seat post to make the entire seat out of. This is a very important part of the build and this was kind of the design concept I came up with. I wasn't exactly sure how this was going to even feel or how I was going to make it but I just decided to go for it. My original idea was just removing the old seat post and and then mounting this triangular form back onto the frame and then putting some pad and just sitting on top of that. Even though the seat design was not fully formed in my mind at this point, I did know I needed to remove the seat post part from this structure. This steel is very thick at these parts, so trying to remove this was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. But I also wanted to retain as much material on the piece as possible, but after a lot of effort, I finally got it removed. I was maybe being a little bit too careful and I could have just hacked off the end, but again, I wanted to retain as much of the material as possible. And after a lot of troubles, I finally got this piece off. Of course, I could have just welded this back to the frame, put a pad on it and called it a day, but I like to make things a bit more difficult on myself. So I came up with a design that was gonna require a lot more fabrication. I've never made a seat before or a seat pan or anything really seat related. so. This is all kind of new to me and I didn't really have a good idea of how it was all going to work together or turn out but I just figured if I keep going I can iterate and make something that will eventually work out. Because the frame is now modded to be a more skeletal open air design I wanted the seat to mimic that design language. Cutting this part in half allowed me not only to have a more segmented look but it also gave me more surface area for the seat portion. It also just looks cool. Because I got a bigger battery, that means I could use a bigger controller on this build, and this is the SVMC 72200, which is a 200 amp controller, so I should be able to utilize the power of that giant battery. I figured it might be a good idea if I just weld the bolts into the frame, that way if I ever need to remove the controller, I don't have to pull out the entire battery to do it. I would have just mounted the controller in the last episode, but I had to wait for these bolts to to arrive. These are the exact length bolts that I need to hold the controller on because I bought them exactly for this purpose. The controller mounts up perfectly fine although after more testing from this video I do think I want to shift it back more but we can address that in a future episode. I'm at the stage where I pretty much have to fully assemble the frame again and here was that fix that I was talking about in the first episode where I had a bunch of wobble in the swing arm. You can see on the right is the old bolt and on the left is the new one. Not only will this bolt take up a ton of extra free play but I'm also adding bearings instead of those rubber bushings that were causing a ton of wobble. I brainstormed a ton of ways that I could remedy this problem but the easiest and the cheapest was just buying these very nice bearings that were only like 50 cents each. I got a whole bag for just a few bucks. To take up some of the extra slack in between the bearings, I'm going to reuse that rubber bushing and I'm just basically using it as a spacer. Everything was going great until I tried to put in the new bolt and then it wouldn't fit through the bearing, which made no sense because I had already tested it with the bearing. I'll have to fix this issue later, so I just reused the old bolt, but even with the new bearings, it does fit a lot better. I didn't want to stop and make it perfect right now so I continued on with assembly and then I ran into another big problem and that was when I went to put the steering tube into the frame I ended up popping the top bearing and exploding it. You can see right here in slow-mo part of the bearing explodes out the top and the ball bearings go everywhere and I don't even know what happened but I definitely learned you should not do it this way because yeah all the ball bearings started falling 
into the tube and then they were binding in there and I had to use a sledgehammer and pound them out. This was a huge pain to deal with so don't be like me, get some help or fasten your frame so that you can gently slide in the steering tube. Anyway, I thought we were making a seat, right? Okay, so I needed the frame all together so I could find which angles I was going to put the seat at. There's no way I could have just done this freehand without the literal frame being the frame of reference so I needed to assemble the entire bike. I didn't really know what I was doing at this point, I just knew that I wanted the seat to be at least parallel with the ground, maybe slightly inclined or maybe even slightly declined. On all of these enduro frames, whether it's a regular bicycle seat or a more motocross seat, they always have the backs of the seats like way up in the air. Also with those motocross seats that are way high in the back, they basically slide you down to the center of the frame, which I'm sure is good for like off-road performance, but I'm not going to be doing a ton of that. So I wanted something that looked cool and was going to be maybe a bit more comfortable. Again, I don't really know what I'm doing and it's very possible I have to remake this seat three, four, or five times to get it right, but I gotta build it at least once to know what I wanna change. One of the hardest parts of making this seat was just how many options I had available in terms of materials and designs. I could have made the seat pan out of wood, I could have made it out of plastic, I could have made it just a ton of different things. I'm definitely the type that can get stuck in analysis paralysis and maybe spend way too much time in the virtual engineering room and that's not always a good thing because it can prevent you from making some progress on your project. So I figured I kind of have an idea of how I want it to be and hopefully it works out but I'm just going to keep going and iterating on this until it is the way that I want it. I figured if I just throw some bars up there then I can mount the seat plate to it and then kind of sit on it and get a feel for what was going to be the most comfortable. So first I got to get some bars on this frame to even hold something somewhere. All these measurements at this point are kind of just my best guess so I'm just going to go from here. It's time to fix that exploded bearing that unfortunately happened to me earlier and all I had to do was put all the tiny little balls back into the race and then seal it up and it was kind of shocking just how easily these would have come out at any time so I must have been very gentle putting the steering tube in all the other times that I have done this. I definitely learned my lesson and hopefully you guys can learn from my mistakes so be very gentle when putting your forks into your frame especially with the top bearing. I do need this to be installed correctly because any variance in the angle at the front mount will change where my seat position is going to be so I need the frame to be as complete as possible. This seat plate steel is very thick and that means it's very heavy so I'm trying to trim down as much of it as I can so that I'm not just hanging off a bunch of extra weight that I don't need. I could have left these side pieces a bit longer but I figured it's probably a good idea if I do cut them down and I think it actually looks a little bit better. This whole time I've owned this frame which has been many years now I just assumed that these three little slots on either side of the seat post were symmetrical but they are not which is definitely strange on why they made it this way but they did so my seat post has offset asymmetrical slots in it and I guess I'm okay with that. Magnets are a good way to hold your pieces in place while you're tacking but I've given up on that with all these crazy angles because the magnets just make my life harder so I'm using the tape method which which did work fine before. Most of my clips are severely sped up but I wanted to show you this in real time so you can just really get a feel for how aggravating it can be when you don't really know what you're doing with welding and you can't exactly get the right angle and it takes you like a minute or two to even just try to find where you're gonna tack it without bumping anything. You have all your pieces aligned just how you want them. You get the right approach angle. You're finally ready to make your first tack and just seal everything in its correct place and show the world how incredible you are at welding. So then you get pissed off, you spend about 15 minutes clamping the crap out of everything so that nothing can move and then you make your one second tack and then everything's great and it's just so easy and welding is super fun and totally not frustrating at all. 
But on a more serious note, I should have probably been using clamps this whole time for this whole project because it does make things a lot easier. Eventually I'll be like those guys that hold like five pieces with their bare hand and then tack like a hundred things in like a span of a second, but I'm not there yet. I know one side isn't a true test, but it was enough for me to get more in the ballpark of where I wanted things and sliding this back quite a bit was a lot more comfortable. I was pretty happy with the angle. It was wasn't too high and sliding me into the frame and it wasn't too low and as you can see I didn't like how these were so far outwards. I didn't want the edges protruding too far out from the frame and this line is about where they do and I didn't need it to be perfect but I decided instead of just cutting them off flat I could try to bend them. I would really love to invest in a break and be able to make very clean bends and sheet metal but I don't have one of those right now so I'm just putting in some pretty deep score marks and bending it with my trusty vice grips. Because of that, these bends came out a bit more crude than I would have liked, but they are at least in the correct shape that I wanted. They're just not as clean which I am pretty okay with because we got asymmetrical slots going on. None of the rest of the frame is symmetrical or perfect in any way, so it kind of fits with the theme of the build. And if I'm being honest, I think these bends actually came out better than I anticipated I would be able to do with the tools that I had. I'm really glad that I did make these bends because I think with that cutoff, it just wouldn't look as finished. I think these pieces came out pretty good with how much uh, cutting and shaping that I have done to them. Now that I have both my seat plates, I just have to weld on the other bar to hold it and then kind of weld everything in place. Yes, one of those bars is slightly longer than the other ones and I might fix that later, but it is under the seat pan, so you're not really gonna see it. Before committing to where these seat plates were going to eventually sit, I just clamped them on and I wanted to take a look and I think it's coming out pretty good. I do have more ideas now about how I could support this from underneath even more and add more reinforcements, but also make it look cooler. So this is not its final form, but I'm pretty happy with how it's turning out so far. I think it fits pretty well with the rest of the design of the frame, but let me know what you guys think. Now that I'm pretty happy with how things are sitting with the frame I now just have to fully weld out all of the bars and pieces because they're just tacked in at this point. Even though I am still an absolute beginner at welding you guys are pretty much seeing all the welds that I've ever done in my entire life but I can notice that I am getting faster and better at welding and it's definitely more enjoyable the better you get at it so if you're struggling like I am just keep pressing on because it does get easier and that means it gets faster. I just got to keep welding this out and then I'll show you where we're at after. And I pretty much ran out of time over the weekend for welding. I did want to get further along, but for mounting these back plates on, I could only really tack them. So I do want to fully weld these out and even add more support braces, but I am out of square tubing as well. So I got to pick more of that up this week. This seat portion was the most unknown part of this whole frame build. And I had no prior experience making anything like this, but I'm actually pretty happy with how this is coming out so far. Of course I will be adding some padding to this. I'm not just going to be sitting on bare metal so don't worry about that. I'm hoping in the next episode I can have this fully finished with all the extra pieces I want to add to it as well. We might be able to actually throw all the pieces kind of loosely together and maybe go on a test ride but I'm not sure. It depends on how far I can get in that amount of time. I'm curious as to what you guys think so far. Does it look stupid or ugly? Ugly. Is it looking cool to you? Let me know in the comments because I'm really curious. I want to thank you guys so much for watching all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. As always, I have a ton more projects lined up for you guys. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one.